Hi, I'm Marnie and welcome to Exploring Colors. Today we are going to work on sketchbooks, but this time a sketchbook on the go. First thing we have to do is open up our Exploring Colors box. And today we are going to need a small package and our markers. And I'm going to take out um, the sketchbook that we worked on last week, just for reference. And we're going to put our box away. Now last week we worked on a sketchbook where you may have a different cover than I do, but it was a sketchbook that we colored um, with crayons, with unusual crayons, and we worked on um, drawings. I did drawings of my hand. You may have done something else, an object, but we worked on newsprint. And today we're going to work on a very different notebook. I'm going to show you that notebooks come in all different sizes and with different paper, and we can use them in different ways. Okay, so I'm going to put uh, last week's notebook, that's the newsprint notebook, aside. So let's see what's in this pink package. I bet it's a notebook <laughs> or sketchbook, right? Okay, so we call this one um, a sketchbook on the go. So let's, um, this is a little hard to open, so you may need your grown-up to just open up the cellophane on this one. Um, but I'm going to try to do it with my fingers and see if I can do it. Sometimes uh, the cellophane isn't so easy to open without a scissor or something to help you. But let's see. Now this is a pocket-sized notebook. It's small, which, put this away, um, I'm going to just take the paper off. And what's great about very small notebooks, you have to draw in a much smaller way, right? It's not as loose and as big, but this one has elastic, which you pull off, and then you open, and you can see it also has, um, what is this called? This is a ribbon, and it's a bookmark. And usually when we're reading books and we get to, let's say, the middle of the book and it's time to do something else or go to bed or whatever, we use a bookmark where we save the page so we know where to go to next time. So you can use that also in your sketchbook. But this sketchbook is small. It's pocket size, or you could put it in your backpack. So I wanted to show you that we can work on very small sketchbooks as well. And today we're going to be using our markers from our box instead of our crayons. And some of the points on these markers are um, much finer, so it's going to be easier to work on our sketchbook. Now, I like to start my sketchbooks off with, um, like, the last one had my name on it. Um, maybe I will open up the book and write Marnie's sketchbook. You don't have to do that, but you can. And maybe I will do a little design. Um, this way, if somebody finds it, if I leave it someplace, they'll know it's mine, right? So I'm going to do a big star because I think stars are fun. And I'm going to outline it again. And I love these markers. We used these a little bit last time where they have two different colors. One side, on this one, one side is teal and one side is purple. And you have to make sure you put the um, tops on correctly. So now I'm gonna do a smaller star. Now you don't have to do a star at all. You could do a drawing of anything you want. Click. But I just felt like doing a star. And I'm gonna do polka dots. And this way, if somebody finds my sketchbook, if I leave it, let's say I bring it to a restaurant or I bring it to the park or the playground or school, um, maybe I want to color a little bit at recess um, or a friend's house, and I leave it there, they'll know it's mine. And I could decorate the other side too, but we can do that another time. Um, also, I may want to do like 
a background to my star. So I'm going to do stripes and I'm going to make it so that the star is in front of the stripes. So I'm just going to put the stripes behind the star. And you can decorate the background of whatever you've drawn. Maybe you drew a smiley face or a butterfly or maybe a person. Maybe you want to put them in a place. But you can have fun with this. And if I wanted to make it into a plaid, I could take the green and go the opposite way. And if I want to keep the star in front of the background, I can just do this where I go, I stop when I hit the star and I just go behind it. But there's so many different designs you can do and there's no right and wrong and you can spend as long or short a time as you want on doing this. Okay, so it's very decorative and fun and colorful. And I'm gonna use this sketchbook on the go and what does that mean? That means when I'm out and about, it's a lot easier to bring this little sketchbook than this big sketchbook out and about, right? So I could bring it to the beach, I could bring it to the playground, any place I want. And right now I happen to be in the studio. So I'm going to draw an interior shot. An interior shot is inside the house, right? Or inside a studio or inside a library or any interior space. We can also take this book outside and we can do a landscape. We can look at what we see. Now when we're using markers and not pencils, pencils we can draw and we can erase and then we can change it and, and draw some more and erase. And it's a little harder to do that with markers, but I'm, so you can use a pencil if you want, but I'm gonna show you how we can use a marker. And the first drawing, I'm going to just do one side of the page. And the second one, I'll do both sides of the page to show you different ways. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, the room. Now my room, um, has a stairway. So I'm going to draw the stairway and I'm looking at it and you should look. Use your eyes and really look hard at what's around you. So I'm going to draw, this is the stairway and I'm just using one color to draw one thing. So that's the stairway in purple and that's the banister going up. Um, and then I have a blue carpet which comes out uh, all in the background. But on top of the blue carpet is the back of a couch. And I'm just going to break it down into shapes. The pillows on the couch are rectangles. And the couch itself is a big rectangle. And it's a plaid, but it's a different blue plaid. So I'm going to take um, this blue and make a plaid. Remember we spoke about plaids being lines that go up and down and then across? So I'm just breaking down what I see into shapes and then into patterns. So here's the couch. And then the pillow is a different plaid, right? It's the same plaid, but it's on a different shape. So it might be going in a slightly different direction, depending on how I put the pillows on the couch. And then the carpet is aqua blue. So I'm gonna just fill that in. So this sketchbook is gonna catch ideas and I love that concept of we're going to just have lots of ideas and we're going to catch them in our notebook and we're going to draw. And then we can go back to this notebook later on and work on some of our ideas or concepts in another way. And I often do that. Most artists keep sketchbooks because if you draw every day, you'll find that your ability to really look and dissect what you see gets easier and easier and your drawings get better and better. Now, the railing of my staircase is not really purple. 
but it looks kind of purple so I, I took the liberty of doing that and I also have a painting on the wall so I'm gonna just I just see a little bit of it and I'm gonna put in a little color here for the painting and sometimes we just see sections of things right and the wall is white but I think I want to change that to a different color because I can, right? I'm the artist. I get to decide. So maybe I'll make the wall pink. And I could make it wallpaper, but I'm just going to make this one solid. And these markers are really great in that you can break things down into shapes. You can do details and you can fill up the page pretty easily with these markers. And you can have fun with picking new colors. Now notice I'm not going right up to the purple because I don't want the purple and the pink to mix too much. But you can if you want to. And I'm really just breaking this down into background, foreground, rug. And I could do an outline on the couch if I wanted to. I'll show you what that looks like. If I wanted to, I could outline the base of the couch and then the pillows. Oops. So that's pretty much uh, an interior shot. And you can see I got a little bit on the edge of the next page, but that's okay. So we're going to turn the page and we can do more drawings. We can think either do another interior shot or I'm going to try one showing you an exterior or a landscape. Now I'm not outside right now, so this is going to be from memory. But if you were outside, you could take this outside and you could take your markers outside too. Maybe you put everything in a backpack and you go outside with your grown up and you pick a pretty spot. The leaves are starting to change now, so in a lot of areas. So maybe you want to do a beautiful landscape of the changing leaves, the foliage, uh, the trees that are starting to change. So let's say, in my imagination, I've seen this so many times that I'm going to imagine it, but you can also do it on plein air or go outside and draw or paint outside, and that's called on plein air or in the fresh air. So I'm going to pretend this is the grass, and I went all the way across both sheets of paper. And a tree trunk, I'm going to give it a tree trunk which is usually it kind of has these arced edges and then it has branches that go out, right? And they get smaller and smaller as you go up. And then another branch. I think trees are magical. And I'm just gonna color that in, but you can look at the tree and, and really see what the shapes are when you're outside. And maybe there's another one over here. Maybe it's further away, so it's smaller. And I'm doing this from memory, but you could do it in real life where you really go out and look. So let's give some of the leaves, I'm going to make some of the leaves orange. Because as leaves start to change, right, they're all different colors. Sometimes they're orange, sometimes they're red brown, green. You could even make magical leaf colors like purple and pink and <laughs> have fun with it. Now this is kind of a burgundy color, let's see. But I, I've seen leaves that are a burgundy color as they start to get older and crispier and they fall. Some leaves will be on the ground. Fall is such a beautiful time of year. I'm going to use some green too because some of the leaves are still green. And leaves are kind of, well, they're all different shapes, really, but I'm making the leaves on this tree to be kind of like teardrops. But leaves come in many different shapes. And if you go outside and you look at the leaves, some of them have five points, some have three points, some are elongated. 
almost like ovals like with points at the end. Sometimes they go over each other. Sometimes they're falling out of the sky. <laughs> and I'm going to make some of this tanny color. Let's see if I have a dark green. Sometimes they're dark green. And I could put a dark green accent on some of the light green if I want to. But um, if I was outside right now, I'd really be able to observe more than just remembering. But it's fun to do both. Maybe I'll take my sketchbook outside later and do it um, outside and do another drawing and just see how different they are. I like to experiment. Okay. So maybe we did orange and we did red and burgundy and I'm going to try a purpley leaf just for fun. And I'm trying to fill in a lot of the leaves up here. Sometimes they're on top of each other, right? Do you ever make piles of leaves and jump in? Sometimes, right? So now I'm going to, grass is usually like kind of little lines, right? So instead of coloring the whole thing in, I'm gonna to try to do that a little bit with like little back and forth lines. It's what I remember. And because it isn't really a line, it's more like you see little bits of grass. And I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> and it has a lot of movement, right? Looks like it's blowing in the wind. But grass isn't just one color. I, when I look at grass, often I see different shades and sometimes in different spots, right? Sometimes one spot looks darker, one spot might look lighter, one might have a, like a little bit of a patch of dirt. Sometimes the leaves blow onto the grass. Now I'm gonna put some of the grass behind the trees too. And I'm gonna make it a little darker green. And I'll be curious to see what your drawings look like. If you go outside, let's see. I don't think I used this one yet. Okay, so maybe I have, I'm gonna make a leaf or two that kind of just scattered kind of far. Maybe a few more red on the tree. Okay, so now the sky. Maybe there is something, a house or something behind. So maybe we'll do a house. Now you're gonna look at the house and see the shapes. So maybe this house I can break it down into triangles and rectangles and maybe there's a door and maybe part of it is darker and maybe there's a path and maybe a chimney and maybe the house itself is a different color maybe let's see and I'm just gonna give it stripes to make it a little darker. And oh, it must have a window, right? So we'll give it a window or two. Okay, so now the sky, the sky sometimes has clouds in it, right? And clouds are white and we don't have a white marker. So if we wanted to do clouds, maybe we would just outline where we thought the clouds would be. Sometimes clouds are big and puffy. Sometimes they're long and kind of in rows. And you can decide how you want to do it. And you can look at the sky on different days. It's going to look completely different. So now I'm going to fill in and I'm going to leave the clouds. I'm going to fill in around them that I drew. And maybe I'll leave a little of the background color because it'll look like there are more clouds. I'm just gonna be very loose with how I do this. And I can always go back over it. 
and maybe I see a bird or a butterfly or something I want to put in. But it's fun to use both sides of the page too, which I'm doing. Give it another big cloud. And then we can go in with accents of other colors. I'll show you. It's really fun. Okay. This takes a while because we're filling in the sky, which is a lot of the background color. Now I'm going to find the dark blue and maybe I'll outline part of the cloud. Maybe I'll do a little bit of the sky in the dark blue and outline the bottom of the clouds. Sometimes the sky has different blues, right? Sometimes it looks like it's one color. Sometimes it looks like it's more than one color. Um, and I'm going to, let's see, do a little bit of yellow because I think it needs brightness. So maybe in the tree, around the tree. And you can do that too if you want. And even the grass could have a little yellow. I just think it kind of brightens it up. It was starting to look a little dull to me. So that's called creative license. Okay, so now, okay, the first one I did an interior and now I did a landscape um, and I can turn the page. Let's say I was outside, I could turn the page and let's say I saw a flower or something outside that I wanted to draw. I could do that. I could do an up close one. It doesn't matter that the one before was far away. The next one could be up close. It could be a, a flower or it could be a, a close up of a leaf on the ground or um, what else could it be? It could be a bug that you see on the ground or um, a little spot that is special to you. But we could also, let's say the next day you take your to-go notebook with you and you're at the playground and you see something that like maybe the swing set you want to draw and you just break it down into shapes and you draw it. Um, I love going to the ocean, to the beach. So I'm going to try one like that. And what I do in my to-go notebooks, I love to go to the beach with markers or paints and I love to paint whatever the ocean and the sky and the atmosphere looks like that day. So each day it's a little different and you're gonna see um, if you go outside on different days and try to draw, you're gonna see it's gonna look a little different. Um, you may think it'll look the same, but the sky will be different and the light will be different. And um, we're, it's fun to capture that in your to-go notebook. So I'm going to do the water. There's a horizon line, right? The water. And usually there are waves. So that's why I'm doing this very loose drawing. And now I'm going to take, and I made sure I put the top on, the next color blue, and I'm just going to add a little in. And usually there are white highlights on the water as the sun shines we see a, a lot of like white and sunshine reflecting on the surface. And sometimes at the edge of the water is like where it crashes. There's like a lot of foamy, foamy waves. And I'm going to try to capture that from my memory. And I'm just kind of doing these rounded lines. And the beach is what color? Usually it's like a tanny color. So I'm gonna. And it's okay to do marks like one way with one thing and another way with something else. So part of sketchbooks, sketchbooks can be very meticulous or very um, precise and you can take your time or you could be very loose and just try to get the essence or the idea down. Um, and I tend to do that a lot, where um, a sketchbook for me is just to kind of think about something, look at it, and capture it. So let's say the sun was shining really bright. And sometimes you see it on the water, so that's why I did that. 
Um, and sometimes the water looks a little green too, not only blue, right? Because yellow and blue makes green. So I'm gonna put a little green into that. And now we have the sky. And maybe this day, they're big puppy clouds. And I'm going to color in the sky. And this drawing is a little looser than my last one. That's okay. The drawings don't have to all work together. They're just, remember, your, this sketchbook is to capture your ideas. Because it's your to-go one. Okay, and so maybe sometimes on the beach we see footprints, right? Sometimes they're people's footprints, sometimes animals or birds. I've been seeing a lot of footprints recently, so I put some in. And I'm gonna go over the horizon line with a little bit of gray to make it a little darker. And right before the wave crashes, I'm gonna go over that too. And maybe a little more dark blue here. But you can, you can either use photos or you can bring this outside and really look at the color and look at the shapes that you see. Sometimes you're surprised. You see things that you didn't know were there. Like recently I've been seeing a lot of birds, so I'm going to put a few birds in mine. And sometimes the birds are on the sand, but my birds are all flying together in the sky. And what would happen if I did a black line at the horizon and a little bit near the waves? That would work too. And these are very loose drawings. And you're going to see as you put more and more into your notebook, you might get a little looser with your drawing. Like I started off being um, much more linear and exact with my first drawing and I got a little looser by this one. So we're gonna do one last one today. And I hope I'm giving you permission. I hope that you'll see that any idea is a good idea, right? Like you don't have to think, oh, I have to do exactly what Marnie's doing. I want you to find what interests you that you see on, on the go and draw it. And if you want to, you could do it one way and then walk around it and do it a different way, turn it upside down. If it's a small object, maybe it's a leaf. Um, maybe it's not an object, maybe it's a landscape. But this it's so easy to go out with this. Like sometimes I go to restaurants with my little book and while I'm waiting, um, I could draw something. Maybe I'll see something that'll catch my eye. So the last thing I'm gonna do, I see a lamp actually inside now that I want to draw and the top part of the lamp is like this and it has I'm breaking it down into shapes I see a line this way and then it comes down I'm trying to break it down into all the shapes now, if I just thought, oh, a lamp, I wouldn't be doing this, right? So it's good to look, to really look hard at different things. And maybe you're in the kitchen doing this, so maybe you'll see something on the stove, or maybe you'll see something else that you want to draw. And I see that this has lines on the lampshade. And it's okay that that line went into each other, right? It makes it look handmade. And actually, this goes all the way down. It's a long standing lamp. So, near the lamp, I have a painting behind it. Let's see, it comes out here. And I'm gonna just draw some of that in. So this is really gonna be more of a sketch on shapes.
and I'm going to put a picture frame in, an abstract painting, and I'm going to put my, there's a mat and a picture frame. And then the side of the wall, and what I could also do is put in yellow. It's a white wall, but I'm going to make it yellow. So it's kind of an abstract. And you can turn your sketchbook to the side if it's easier to color, which I just did. I'm trying not to get my yellow into the black because I don't want it to ruin the marker. But by putting in the yellow, it kind of sets it apart. And maybe even though it's the same white in real life, I'm going to make this side orange. I think it'll be more interesting. So you can paint your room without really painting it. <laughs> and you could take this little to-go sketchbook to your bedroom even. And you could draw there. You could ask your grown-up where they're okay with you using your markers, but you could kind of go to different places. Now, I'm going to put some pink in my painting because I just think it'd be fun. Very colorful. And uh, let's see if I want to do anything else. Maybe the yellow wall will have an, some sort of an accent. Maybe I'll do stripes. Now, I don't really have stripes, but this is where it's fun to play. And notice how this one kind of looks a little bit like my first one. <laughs> and I'm going to go to this side. Now and make it a plaid. So you can see, like, it won't take you long to fill up your sketchbook, but you can put this one in a special place in your um, backpack. I think it'd be great to go in your backpack in the pocket. So I have Marnie's sketchbook. And the first one was the interior, and then we went outside. I went outside in my memory, but you should go really outside with your, ask your grown-up where you can go. And then I did the beach from memory, but I love to go to the beach. So next time I go, I'm going to bring my sketchbook. And then I did an interior, and I could continue it if I wanted to, to this side, like I could keep going and I could use other colors if I wanted to, and I could extend. This, I could use the same colors, I could use the black and not this brown, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to do something different. I could make this swirlies kind of magical. So this side is kind of realistic and this one is not, but that's okay. And maybe I will continue this drawing, but with different colors. Now you saw on this one, I did it the same, but this one I decided each side of the page could be different. So there's so many ways to do this and it doesn't have to be the same as mine. It could be your own interpretation because there's only one you. And I want to see what you can do. Okay, almost done. Now I'm going to um, make a design here. And here I'm clicking. And maybe I will 
finish this. Okay. Perfect. The last thing I'm going to do is fill in this side and maybe every other, I'll give it a purple band. And maybe a little bit of an accent with yellow, with circles. So this becomes almost an abstract painting, but it's really of a place. I started with my lamp and the room, but then I gave it magical colors. And if I end here today, um, I'm going to use my bookmark and I'm gonna close it and I'm going to put the rubber band on because we always clean up, right? And then with our markers, we're gonna make sure the tops are on properly. Whoops. And everything is closed and we're gonna put those away too because I may decide to put all of this into my backpack or my pocketbook or my bag, whoops. And I'm going to show you how small these are so you can actually um, enjoy these on the go. And some people capture ideas in words, right? Or music. And this is a way to capture ideas in drawings visually. Okay, so I'm going to fold this over. Now this can go back into my box just like this. And it's small or if your grown-up says okay, you can put it in one of your bags and just have it with you to create. And I hope that you had a good time doing this. And I really hope you'll take photos and ask your grown-up to put it up on Instagram with the hashtag exploring colors. And I can't wait to see what drawings you put in your to-go notebook. And let's all share. And next week we're gonna do some really fun things. See you then. <music>